Obviously, it sounds good. You will definitely enjoy it. You will enjoy everything I provide you with and tell you to do. I can't imagine any sort of negativity or disagreement coming from one of my friends. I will assume that we share this philosophy when it comes to friendship. You say, oh yes, absolutely. You nod as enthusiastically as you can without aggravating your broken ribs. You consider giving her a thumbs up as well until you realize one of your arms is probably broken too. You'll try to make sure she doesn't notice though. It would probably leave a bad impression. Come with me. There's something I need your help with. You follow her into her hive. It's a bit gloomy in here. You suppose she's going to fix you something to eat soon, as promised? You pass through her kitchen and out the other side to another room? Okay, you guess dinner can wait. This way. Try not to let any of your broken limbs slow you down. A good friend wouldn't allow such trifling physical ailments cause me any inconvenience. Oh, so you guess she does know you're injured? Fair enough. You hobble a little faster, through another door into a much darker room, and now down a flight of stairs? It's hard to see. There are torches along the wall ahead. Monstrous noise rumbles below. Don't mind her. She's just hungry. She's always hungry, though. What's that? You're hungry, too? I have not forgotten. What sort of piece of shit friend do you take me for? You didn't remind her that you're hungry. You thought it, though. Can she read your mind? You hope not. That's going to make this friendship in progress a bit awkward. Here we are. This is where you will be most useful to me as a friend. You look around. With a sense of relief, you see no sign of whatever hungry thing was grumbling down here. You are less relieved to see several other kids trapped in cages of various shape and size. One of them makes eye contact with you. The boy is the same kind of alien as her, horns and all. He has a dark red symbol on his shirt. His expression seems to plead with you. He struggles to say, Help. Your new friend looks unamused and twitches her finger. Help. Hello. He says. Help. Hello. By which I mean hello, of course. Looks like you're the new friend in progress. Chosen by the great and beautiful Ardata. She's my savior. My reason for being. I am nothing without her. I'd hollow myself out and let her make a nest inside of me if she'd permit it. You turn away from this boy. You don't want to hear anything he has to say ever again. <laughs> don't mind him. He's always regarded himself as a comedian. Come. Over here. This is what I need your help with. If you're going to have any value to me as a friend. You're led to a dank corner of this... Well, you're going to call it like you see it. This dungeon. Your new friend has a dungeon full of sad, suffering children and presumably a monster lurking somewhere in here as well. It's not ideal. Then again, social beggars like you can't be choosers. I've been having an awful time with it. You can do it for me. It will save me time. You look at the thing in question. You doubt she's been having an awful time with it. You doubt this because it's still in its box, looking completely untouched since it was brought down here. It's a box containing a... table? A table that looks ominously like it was designed to keep a person strapped to its surface. I will need you to assemble it. Here's a screwdriver, in case you need it. I will assume other required tools are contained within the box. You take the screwdriver with your non-broken arm. This isn't exactly what you had in mind. You don't know what you had in mind, really. A warm meal and friendly banter? Perhaps a sling for your arm and remedial balm for your ribs. Still, you open the box without protest. Hold on, before you start. This will make for excellent content. My fans will appreciate this. She sets up a video recording device on a tripod and points it at you. A video feed comes to life on several monitors just behind you. You see in one corner of the screen an unflattering angle of your torso hunched over the furniture box. Other rectangles contain shots of the other kids in cages around the room. You suppose cameras are pointing at them too. 
You had no idea this friendship came with a perk of instant stardom. Now, you may begin. She's suddenly sitting in a comfortable looking chair facing you, and holding a chalice, swishing around some viscous liquid it contains. You have all the parts spread out on the floor, organized according to their labels in the instructions. You remember the last time you assembled something like this. You don't recall enjoying it. To be perfectly honest, this doesn't look like it will be fun at all. She frowns conspicuously. Oh, how sad for you. I'm sorry. Is this activity not to your liking? You reassure her vigorously that no, it actually looks amazing. You love shit like this. It's, it's what you were born for, you say as you swoosh the screwdriver around, demonstrating your plainly evident skill with the tool. Forget the thing you just thought. Completely arbitrary and wrong thoughts pop into your head all the time. It meant nothing, you swear. <laughs> yes, I hear that a lot. Continue. You open a little bag full of screws. Jesus, there are like 50 screws to this thing. Where could most of these screws possibly even go? Uh, judging from the picture, the table really doesn't seem that complicated. You look at your screwdriver, then study the screws. Every single one requires an Allen wrench. Does this thing even come with an Allen wrench? The instructions seem to suggest it does. You look around, but don't see one. Did you open the bag too forcefully? Did the Allen wrench go bouncing off into a dark dungeon crevice nearby? Maybe you lost some of the screws too. Damn it! You begin to sweat and look around nervously. You check underneath one of the parts. No, it's not under there. You grip the screwdriver a little tighter. You wonder what to do next. <laughs>